Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif, and thank you for listening to City Life Podcast Urbanistica. This episode is about co-working spaces. My great guest sitting in front of me. He's the superman when it comes to go to market, David Knutson. Hey, David. Hi, <laughs> Mustafa. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, and thank you for your time. No worries. My pleasure. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. It's, uh, it's full on. Um, I'm both trying to work and doing a bit of what we call in Sweden Papa Liedig, which wow. is a parental leave. So it's always a good mix. How do you manage your time, David? It's a big question. You're it's, doing so many things. I am. Right now, obviously, my absolute focus is to, to take care of my son. I need to say that because this will be recorded. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to manage my time to really like find what I want to do and try to go for it and put my focus to that, even if that focus is just for a few hours. And I like to do different things because I love to just learn. And one of the things that we do is working with, as you said, like co-working. What is co-working? And that is one thing. But I've taught myself about co-working by working within the industry of furniture, interior design um, for a very long time. And especially, I mean, co-working is about the community. And that's another part called communication, which is one of my biggest interests as well. So I sort of put that together in, in, in one. So if you tell me about your passion and your journey, mm -hmm. you're doing so many different things. You're managing so many different projects. Mm -hmm. If you could just summarize or tell me the highlights of your <laughs> best projects so far that you're doing now. The highlights of what I do now... Um, obviously there is one thing I'm, I'm, I mean I do consult people how to go to market how do you launch a product or a service or as of today a service is a product as well so there is so many different projects within larger Swedish corporation who are trying to do a huge move within the company it could be a furniture company launching a new as, as easy as a chair I can't say which company it is, but I'm working with that right now, which is truly interesting. But it's not just a chair. Why would it be a chair? Why would you buy a chair? In what way does it fit to any of it? What's the story behind a chair? So I'm trying to help that, this company with that. Uh, I'm looking into uh, a global expansion of co-working and what's the next phase of co-working. Because, I mean, co-working has been around since... 1999 and as an expression it was uh, it was launched i would say in 2005 for the very first time in the us used and in sweden there are, is moving forward but it doesn't for everyone it's not easy to earn money so one of the projects that i'm looking into right now is to establish a new type of co-working space outside of stockholm which will not just be about co-working but it will be a, a place where you go to you can go do exercise, you can do, you can eat there, you can mingle, you can do all sorts of activities, which is sort of co-working 2.0, if you want to call it like that. Okay, that's really interesting. I, I would love that we come back more to yeah. this, but let's start with the, the standard co-working 0.1. Yes. So tell me, what is it about? Is it just what we know or the general story about it is a place where different startups meet and work because they don't have a big office for them because they are... Not so many. There are so many things that people think about co-working spaces, um, which is true and some are not true. Obviously, it totally depends on who, who is the co-worker um, and who is who's running the co-working space. A co-working space is a, is a space where you can share your ideas, you can share what you wanted to, what, you, what your passion is about. If you're a small company, if you're a one-man band like myself, I still love to work with people. I want to be around people, but I do not want to sit in a cafe. I mean, as of today, cafes and hotel lobbies are brilliant places to start with, but I do want to be part of a community. You can't be really a part of a community sitting in a cafe. Sometimes you can, you can meet people, but you're not part of a community. In a co-working space, the space is secondary to the community. So it's basically about a co-working community. You want to be part of something bigger. It could just be as easy as having lunch with someone. I'm working with one thing. I'm working sometimes as a speaker or as a host. I need someone who can do a copywriting role for me. 
or uh, I want to so have someone who do any kind of job. And you might be that because we share the same table in this co-working space and I had no idea you existed. Suddenly you sit there and you can have help me with what I do and I help you back. So it's really about sharing. Um, it's basically about different way of paying each other. Uh, sometimes not about money, but uh, services. So you go into a co-working space. You can you have you can have your desk. You don't have a desk. You can have a fixed space, which is basically everything from leaving pictures of your kids or your dog or whatever. You can have your own room. That's more of a, like you old way fashion. You share your fax machine sort of thinking. Uh, <laughs> but a co-working space for me is basically about you're in a huge or small space. You have free coffee, which is the fundamental thing of co-working space, especially in Sweden. You need to have coffee. Um, and you have like prints. You have the afterworks. You have the summer party, the winter party. There is always this, this service around. There is someone changing the light bulb. There is someone that take care of you. There's someone fixing the toilet, freshing up the, the facilities and everything around that. So for a very small amount of money, you can share a space, but the space will always be secondary to the to the community. Because again, that's I have really learned a lot throughout these years to see that how many people work in these places. And it's not just startups, Mustafa. It's basically it's startups. You and I start a company today. We might start start in my home, or we might start in your home. But after a while, like, oh, okay, not really as 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 good because we want to be inspired by others. We start to co work, go to co co working space, start up with a little sum sum of money, and then we increase and we get like two people, three people, four people. But suddenly something happens, and you have to be two people again. A co working space can really facilitate your growth but also you temporarily drop down. But there are so many companies, there are maybe five or even 20 people who want to really come to a co-working space because they see the benefit of having a closed, co a closed office space. But if they open the door, exactly, there's so much stuff outside the door. There's someone playing ping pong, talking about the latest app that they develop. Suddenly there's someone talking about the car sharing services. You have another one talking about Taxi Stockholm is running his accountant. It's like, really? Why? Why are you here? Well, I am here because I love to be part of the people. And you start having these impromptu conversations. Absolutely love that. But also now, and this is rare, fairly new here in Sweden, at least, is that larger corporations that have a big office space somewhere else with maybe thousands of employers, also joining the co-working space because it might be that they have a few people living close to a co-working space. We don't want to commute, even if it's just outside to the suburbs. We want to have something closer than that company can provide with that. Or, which, I, which we are in one of the co-working spaces as of now, in this space there is, um, there is uh, a company that we have been in contact with talking about having an innovation hub within the co-working space. So this company would have 10 people working with an innovative program for six months, but they do not want to sit at their office. They want to sit with other people doing this new and totally sometimes boundless things, which you don't have because in larger corporations, sometimes you have structure. Here, sometimes you do not have structure at all, but you still want to run a structured six months project within a new innovation. Perfect spot. So that as well, a co-working space will facilitate. So it's from the small person starting up or running a small business to the larger corporations. And it's a space where you can find each other. That's amazing. Sounds like a, a paradise for networking and great community. But for this number of services, if we talk about the average, how much does it cost to, be, to rent a place in a co-working space? It's a totally, I mean, normally if you would rent a space in the old fashioned way, you would talk about square meters. It's like you sell square meters. That's what, if you want an office, you talk about square meters. Exactly. In a co-working space, you always speak about the seats. Like how, how many seats do you want? Do you want to have two seats? Do you want one seat or how many? And then you pay for that. 
Um, and a seat is a desktop. It could be a desktop. It could just be a, a lounge. So, for example, there are different levels. Most of them is sort of a coffee space on drugs. Because it basically is <laughs> about the drugs is the coffee. You include the coffee, you include the printing, you include a few meeting room hours. You include the services that you get. So all it's a service that you purchase. So for just for, for the park, for example, where we, where we are right now, it's 1,600 a month. That's the cheapest one per month. And that's what you, you get so much for basically nothing. And then you get in sort of an environment of a coffee shop, but you have the add-on that you don't have in a coffee shop. Then you have shared desks, which you have a normal, like really good chair, sharing desk, and then you have your own desk, and then you have a closed room. So there's four levels of them. Okay, so four different packages of... Everything is different packages again, okay. and, it, and it's about the services, how, what do you need as of now? And it's so, I mean, there's so many sharing services out there today. I mean, Uber, and you have Volvo's car sharing service. There are so many, you pick whatever you need for the moment, and you pay for what you need at the time. So it's basically, it's a Swiss army office. It's basically what you need for, it's a f like there is phone booth, there is conference rooms, there are shared spaces. Oh my, my God, you can, you can continue. There's so many different things. Are you looking for a specific type of uh, startups, company, people? Is it just for the people who is working in the tech field or it's open for everyone? Because... Yeah, again, like one more time, it's, you know, the story is always about the people who's working in tech, not for everyone. If I might be someone who's working with urban planning, I might not be that welcome here. So, yeah, make the image. <laughs> it's also cool. one of those things that people think that they know and they believe because mostly, mostly that is the company you hear about. You hear about the tech company being started up in, for example, one of the, what, the biggest one in the world or one of the two is WeWork. Um, and obviously there's a lot of, they see themselves sometimes as a, as a, as a tech company, um, which a lot, of, a lot of people can discuss. But again, it's definitely, definitely not just about tech companies at Coro. You're more than welcome to sit. I just mentioned before about Taxi Stockholm's accountant, which is like, it's very not tech. And there are, there's gym gym companies that sit here. There are yoga instructors. There are people that are on stages like myself. Sometimes I'm I'm working as a host and I'm here. I have different hosts. There are all sorts of people that do not want to sit with just the ones. I mean, if I had a hub which or a co-working space with just speakers and hosts and stuff, that would be fantastic for a while. But after a while, you want to expand. You want to see what other people do. There are obviously co-working spaces out there that has a niche. They they are they are they want to do a niche within tech, or they want to have a niche within. Um, if you you are you're only allowed if you do uh, something that's really good for the world. Yeah, there are. I mean, even even in in Asia, there are one if you're a parent. Oh wow! Which is fantastic. I would love to have that right now, <laughs> but there is a particular one that's just specified to that target group. But. Most of the stuff I would say you're more than welcome, whoever you are, because I believe in this. Oh my God, do you do that? I had no idea that even someone did like city planning. What is city planning? Like, tell me more about that. Uh, I have so much to tell about this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But tell me about the community. How is it? Is it just for men or there are some women's like the diversity in the gender, age? I would say gender. Age is, I mean, is a huge, um, there is, there isn't, you can't tell like, this is just guys, this is just women. Um, and it's, it's gender, it's age. The oldest one that I have accounted that actually checked into one of the park, she is 83 and she wrote a book uh, about the area of where this co-working space is and she loved it. She just, well, I want to see what today's youth is all about. And she was more than welcome. Uh, and the youngest one is uh, 17, uh, I think, who's part of another co-working company. So there's a huge spread. And also, there is a lot of expats. 
there as you, you it barely you can't really go to any co-working space especially not in stockholm just like well, let's do swedish well of course you can do swedish but there are so many nationalities so there is professions there is genders there is age and there is a huge influence of where people come from it's fantastic and there is a for example as of we, where we are now there is there was an event for we call i think it's called compis sverige is about like how you integrate in Sweden if you're a new if you're a new Swede. Then there will be facilitating events here about that, and that is because there is so many people that are from so many different places, which I think is an it's an open platform basically, but it's a physical meeting space, and there is a lot of people talking about I mean social media and everything is on digital. This is sort of the the physical space where you should meet and we love we love to i'm watching you right now looking into your eyes and we have a much better discussion here rather than sitting on linkedin talking so it's a physical meeting space for for everyone basically so t- tell me more more about the social values mm-hmm. in within the community mm-hmm. i mean op- first of all it's very open it's like if you're prepared to share you're welcome if you if you don't like to share well then this is not for you the social value is is definitely to be an an open the climate should be very very open and it, it's it's a place you just want to be at i mean if you there is no one that there's no one i mean i've working within 10 years almost within the interior design you always have this feeling about if you sit in a sofa if you if you're sitting there with your laptop are you really working are you really working if you're sitting in the sofa and work? And that, that, that sort of feeling is that here you, you have, if you sit in the sofa, it's fully accepted. Fully accepted no matter who you are, what you do. And that is, that is, is an interesting interaction study to really do because people sit and half like you almost see people sitting on the ground sometimes or sitting in different weird ways that I would never see in a, in a normal uh, office. But you see them here because it's allowed, uh, and and I mean I don't know if it's if it's a Swedish perception of, of things, but it's it's more open climate. You can do you can be you doing what you love to do in a, in a co-working space. But this bring me to another question. It sounds like uh, it's a kind of too social. Where is the boundary that okay I want to work with my business and mm-hmm. I don't want to be disturbed by people yeah. and here like thousands of people. Yeah want to network and where, where are the boundaries on how do we create these boundaries very good question and there are i mean probably people listen to it, it sounds like oh my god it's for the people who are really so it's like a social party what nothing is getting done sitting in the sofa i see myself as an extrovert person if i go to a co-working space from time to time i can i can spend a day doing absolutely nothing except networking then that is my job for a, for a day. But there are also sometimes you sort of really need to sort of lock yourself in and do really like produce stuff or whatever, make the calls you need to do or whatever. Then a co-working space has different physical areas, which is important. There are quiet zones. There are more open zones. There are collaboration zones. There is drop-down areas. There are, yeah, there are so many different spaces and those spaces are to be respected. Obviously, it's, it's not. It's it's about the physical environment, but it's also how the um, community manager tells and teach people. But because it's 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 it doesn't have a rules. Co-working space normally doesn't have any rules that you can't sit here. But it sort of becomes rules after a while. But then it's the people in the co-working space that have decided themselves. That's how I see it anyway. I mean, some people might say differently. But obviously, like so many other places, there are a lot of headphones. Um, and headphones normally mean do not disturb. Uh, and that is a very like, a very easy way of doing it. There are co-working spaces that have signs, which you can grab a sign. Basically, if you order a sandwich, you have the number on it. It's the same thing here, but you have a, a green or a red flag, or whatever it might be. That's okay, it's okay to disturb me. Because if you have an opened sitting in a, in a lounge area, well, anyone can come. And obviously, you can get disturbed. And then again, depending on how you are as a person, you know your best yourself. If I sit there, I can see my eyes going everywhere and I have a really hard time focus. But then I need to, myself, move away 
to somewhere else and saying, okay, I can only see out or I can stare in the wall if that's what I want. So it's very much up to you. Uh, and, the, and the potential rules are being set by the people working there. So it's a kind of the rules are created by the community, yeah. agreed by the community. I would say so, yeah. But tell me about the community manager. Mm-hmm. I mean, the community manager, uh, uh, depending on who you ask about that, but if you ask me, the community manager's role is to facilitate the meetings the com- in, uh, bet- between the companies that are in the co-working space. And by facilitating, I mean that you want, you want Mustafa, I want you to meet Anders because I, I, Anders is doing this. And I think what he's doing here is something that you can enjoy. Have a cup of coffee, see you around and then leave. Those things like really facilitate the, the physical meeting. And that is, that is one important thing. Otherwise, it's of course to, to make sure that there is afterworks. There are all of these parties that people think that is only it's only only about parties or there was a few weeks ago there was a huge um, um, DJ battle between three of Stockholm's co-working spaces that is one of those activities obviously but on a daily basis it's about how do I meet the, the co-workers because you can come to a co-working space and start off with like it's like first day of school it's like, who do I meet? Why do why do I meet? Who am I to interact? And being a Swede, sometimes Swedes are not the best sometimes to start initiate a conversation, except if you have a kid or a dog. Um, <laughs> uh, then we're really good at it. But, uh, but here, then, then that's what you can do. And that's that person's role um, or the person's roles, uh, which I think is one of the more crucial roles that the co-working space can have. That's very important. Like, it is for sure. What the, are the other roles in the organization? De- depending on who I mean, who, who who you are listening. I mean, obviously, this is like a hotel. This is like a conference center. Uh, it's an office space, um, all in one. So it's very alike a hotel business. You need to make sure that every it, because it, what we are selling is a sh- is a shared service, and it everything from from. A lot of cl- cleaning, maintaining. If there is, ob- if there's a cafe or a restaurant, obviously that in itself has a lot of staff working there. But other than it's a community manager, a lot of content is to be done because I've never been in a place with the more content possibilities. It's not just what what the co-working space is is doing by themselves, but if you have hundreds of company, you have so much fantastic content to spread whatever you want to, to talk about in all the channels that are out there, including this format as a podcast. There is so, so there, there is a content manager, there's social media managers. Uh, it, could, it could definitely be the, is in charge of the conferences, uh, the conference hosts, because if you, a large thing is the co-working space, most of them have the co-working space activities. They have meeting, room com- meeting rooms and events, which is a large, obviously quite a big uh, income stream which is important and that itself needs to be run because if you hire a space you want to have everything um, sorted everything from food water and uh, what have you so there is and then there's someone who's taken care of like the chief chief operation officers is quite common to run run the business itself finance digital and physical community managers we talked about one of them but there's normally also someone keeping track on everything online because even if you leave a co-working space it is it seems to be more and more important that you also can follow your community online so a lot of co-working space have their own tools so like a mini facebook what have you it's like hey is anyone knowing a good accountant can i find one yeah you can find me on level three. Oh, great I'll, I'll be there in five minutes Someone needs to take care of that. So, depending on how you how large you are as a as a uh, as a co-working actor, you don't really need that many staff in management. But it's really about the service. It's like a a whole city in a building. So many things happening. Yes. So many things. Yes. Happening. Swiss Army office, but again, there is furniture. This needs to be moved. There is event sometimes, and oh, wow, and this could be a breakfast seminar. But a few hours ago, the big launch party ended in, the, in, in two meters away from there. And then someone suddenly needs to change everything. So it's, it is, 
it's really about a usage of space in a better way and especially in cities all around the world where square meters are becoming well more and more uh, what, what do we do with them with the, with the little space that we have and this is a perfect i know that co-working space are more and more used in in the evenings i know there are ikea is even involved in the project when there's a, when they work in in um, and co-living and co-working is something that really is more and more involved but then there are regulations that you say you can't sleep in a co-working space because it, then it's not a hotel so I think there are, I mean, obviously there's laws and rules you need to follow, but it's, I think we, need, we will see some stretch in that because when you and I leave in this co-working space that we're in now, which is almost 7,000 square meters large, why couldn't this potentially become a place to stay over the night for some people? Today, by law, you can't, but who knows? Okay, if we step out of uh, this beautiful and charming co-working space, and we talk about the co-working space in the city, in the large scale. Mm-hmm. Are the public people welcome to attend events or different uh, parties? Mm-hmm. Or, or everything happen in a co-working space, stay in a co-working space for the co-workers? What you say in a co-working space stays in a co-working space. No. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. It is, it is surely, depending on what, what it is, there are there are things that are that are happening that are for the public. Um, for example, here again uh, at the park, there are uh, sem- there are seminars, inspiration seminars every Thursday, open to everyone. You get a free sandwich and you can listen to to an inspiration talk for about an hour, and then you can decide to, if you want to stay on or you leave and you go back to work and you be bang on work at nine o'clock, in, which is important. But there are always there's also closed events. So you as a public, yes, you're welcome to some. Most co-working spaces do do show this online, and you can just sign up and see what it is. Because again, there's so many interesting things happening. There are parties, there are launch events, um, which people then want you to come to. But there are also closed events because those closed events makes it a bigger value for the co-working actor to actually have. Because why? I mean. You need to have that as well. So it's, it's a very long answer to your question, but they're, they're yeah, absolutely open and closed. Do you think we should have more co-working spaces instead of standard offices? I would say, I think a co-working is, um, is again, co-working is a way of working. Uh, that's why I think sometimes when people say co-working spaces is secondary to co-working community. You can have a nor- quote, normal co-working normal uh, office with the co-working atmosphere i know there are larger corporations out there owning a lot of large buildings and they wonder why okay but couldn't we actually have part of this office to become a co-working so every, so other people can just come in i mean we, we we go everywhere today we go within sweden we travel outside of sweden if i have a meeting and i'm a bit early I could potentially just pop into a co-working space in another country or another con. I mean, there's so many possibilities. So I do believe that a lot of normal offices will be more of a co-working. The norm as an office might be that a lot of them will be co-working offices, depending on how large the corporations are. But again, we can we can, t- we can talk about the number of freelancers that are becoming more and more frequent. And the more freelancers, the more co-working spaces. But that will take some time, obviously. Yeah, it will take some time. Of course, of course. Okay, before we move to the co-working space 0.2, tell me what are the challenges that a co-working space facing now, let's say in Stockholm? Mm-hmm. A challenge that, that we are facing overall is to get people to come, people to join the co-working space that you want to have. The challenge is obviously to see, in the, like, wh- how do you find your profit? Where is the profit? Because you need to be able to build a good model. And that's a challenge for a lot of people. There is also, I mean, we talked earlier about everyone is welcome and everyone is welcome, but because there's so many spaces popping up, why would I come to you? Yes, it is very much about location, location, location. The closer you are to the city, that's one thing if you're a city person, if you are, we are right now just outside of the city in Södermalm. Okay, if I live around here, I love to come there. So it's about location. But it's also like, how can you attract companies here? How can you attract the larger corporations to co-work with your smaller corporations? Because again, 
if you're really good at facilitate this as a community manager, you will make sure there are different companies in there to really activate your members. So how to get the right people together and like the right corporations is a constant struggle, um, but it's also a great challenge, which I, I know that a lot of people love to work with. Um, but it's about finding your niche. Why should I come to you if I happen to live close to another office? Is there any big competition between the different co-working spaces here in Stockholm? Of course it is. Now, uh, yes, it is. Um, but it's also because there are a lot of them are really situated in different spaces, like physical spaces all around the city, in the north and south. And the more and more the Stockholm grows, the more it will happen. I mean, we are just expecting now three, I think it's like three or even four floors in a new area of Mortensdal in, in Hammarby Sjöstad, which is a larger building. I can't remember Stockholm U or Stockholm 1 or something like that. That is will be a great thing. But around there, there isn't really any. There is another one. There's uh, Go to 10, which is another great uh, co-working space. But then it's, it's about location. So it's obviously it's a com- competition. I would say it's a positive competition. Uh, and then it, again, like, are you prepared to pay 1,600 for your membership? That, great. But or are you want to be having a more exclusive club? Because there is also club membership downtown, which is also considered to be a co-working space. But they call themselves uh, a business club or something else, which is depending on who you are, completely depending on who you are. And then obviously you are a, a competitor, but then on depending on who uh, who's the target audience. Do, do you think... Uh starting a co-working space in a suburb will work or not? Very good question. I mean, during my time working with this, I have got questions from, from people doing exactly that. I have got people from smaller cities in, in, in Sweden. It's like, can I really, is this a really like a large city phenomena or it, will it be something that I can start as well? I know that there are co-working spaces up north in Sweden, which has been initiated by the, the companies in the region. So they have put themselves together, creating this potential good platform because they need great people. But these great people, wh- where should they come from? So it's becoming a hub for then the larger corporations in the area to have, but then they pay to help. And of course there is a little membership fee, but it's not there supported by that. So that is something that I think even the suburbs outside of Stockholm we will see more and more about that. And again, going back to more and more freelancers. Freelancers sometimes, they do not want to commute. They want to be close to their home. And because I don't really have as much money or I don't I want to live in the city, I want to live somewhere outside of the city. Well, then you should stay there. And there is a possibility to have a co-working space in Kungens Kurva or in Danderyd or in Akalla, whatever you go to. Of course there is. But you have to potentially find a little bit different business model for that. So there is a big potential. Absolutely. And do you think there is a potential that I have one card and I can access all the co-working spaces in all the city? Of course. Do you believe in this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are, as of today, there are, there are a membership. You can sign up. To, I mean, for example, I know there are co-working spaces in Stockholm that are connected to an app. And in this app, you can pick, you can be a member of this app and the app in itself gets you access to a lot of different co-working space, no matter if it's the park or, or the Norsken or Epicenter, or whoever, whoever they are, they are part of this. That's one, one, one model of doing it. It's one of the biggest competitive advantages that WeWork have. They're a massive global partner. And obviously the people that go there, they, a lot of them have offices uh, in other places in in the, in the Nordics and in the world. But I do believe that there is a need for a temporary offices for a lot of people uh, commuting from Stockholm, Göteborg, Malmö, whatever. So uh, absolutely it is. David, take me to co-working spaces 0.2. Take me to the future. How do you imagine the future of co-working spaces? The future of co-working spaces will, I mean, the whole thing is like an experiment. It is truly an experiment. I mean, developing a normal office has been just looking like the same thing for 50 years. Everyone's sitting in rows and then we have the open landscaping, activity-based working, and now we have this thing called co-working. 
I believe that co-working will be something that we for sure won't know what it will mean, but it will be a space that I want to go to. I'm not going to work. I'm going to go there because I enjoy the company of my uh, my coworkers, but I also can have, I can stay for anything from a drink to going to exercise, going to my dance class, having a recording a podcast or whatever I do. It's a part of a place that I really want to go to. It will become more than just a space to go to and work at. And as I said before, without telling too much about the project, because I can't do that at this point, but it's to find new business models between how the the owner of buildings work with the ones that are in the buildings in a new model. Like, will it be restaurants, including the co-working space? Will it be gym, including that? Will it be, as you mentioned before, will it be one card for everything? I mean, tomorrow's ownership is access. Like, you do want to have access to things. And the, the less hassle, the better. So I think it will be a lot of the space you go to. I want to be there, but I also would like to have more of the things that I'm paying for or seeing the benefit of. But like now the shopping malls are very popular. Mm -hmm. Do you think if we just add one more floor as a co-working space, it will create the paradise of everyday life? Is it the potential to to combine these together, a shopping mall and a co-working space? If a shopping mall itself evolves, I mean, we we are living in a retail experiment as well. Like, you don't really know what that will be. I mean, re- uh, shopping space becomes more and more a meeting zone. But we also want to be outside more. Um, and I think that is really, really something that we will see more about. Like, outside moving inside, um, which we do see in normal offices. But I think that is crucial. We need everything from daylight to plants and to feel better. The emphasis of feeling better is obviously something that we'll see more and more. Standing up, shorter meetings. And on your question, will it be a fantastic place to live and stay and act and be? There are places around the world which you never really have to leave the building uh, because everything is in the building, um, in Asia and, uh, <laughs> and definitely in the, in, the, in the Legoland of Dubai. And I mean, there are there is so many potential out there to see what the co-working space 2.0 will be but then also means that you need to change the retail area into meeting space Uh, but there should be a place for concentration and co-working so it needs to be conscious like everything can't just be a fun park Uh, you really need to think about how you design it i mean in your profession what this will mean and sometimes people actually want to move from one place to another. They, they do not want to sit at the same place. Some people love commuting because that's where they have their headspace. They love sitting by the headphones and having an hour of whatever it is to just, when I came home, come home, it's just about my family. So that is something that, that will be something that we have to discuss and constantly discuss. There needs to be a border between private life and business life in the life of where we remove that boundary. Well, this sounds really interesting. <laughs> it is. But do you really believe, if we talk a smart city, do you believe that people still will go to work with all the VR and uh, new technology to meet? I mean, you can just do it by sitting at home. Yes, you can. Yes, I absolutely believe that we will, every kind of video meeting, I'm sure will happen with any kind of VR or whatever it will be in the future. I think that will improve a lot. And then, I mean, to lower the emissions of flying and whatever we do, yes, but we also need physical contact. I need to shake your hand. I need to give you a hug. I need to feel how you interact with me physically. It is an important thing uh, to have. And I really believe we have to do that in the future as well. And I think we want to do that. I mentioned before about there, 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 there are so many ways to meet already today online but there needs to be an area of physical meeting as well. Um, so I think the VR or AR will be a good complement because we see the, the need of video meetings increasing in the co-working space area, um, normally just one-to-one persons. But I mean, the more VR will be better, it will be fantastic. Great. Well, the big challenge for us as uh, urban planners or people working with city development is the space. Yeah. You know, 
city is developing and there are not so much space left yeah. for putting new activities. Do you believe that the co-working space have a big potential to be a multi-use space? I mean, the after work, for instance, could be a place for students to study or as you mentioned in the beginning, a place to sleep mm. as a hotel. What's other potential functions? You, I mean, we, we all we speak a lot about younger people and I do believe not just because I know there is a huge need for it but I know there will become I mean especially I mean especially here in Stockholm and in Sweden there will become more older people uh, that w- what will happen to them like plus plus 60 plus 70 how will they where, where is the co-working area co-sharing IDs or whatever how can we get them on board how can they meet with younger people and we actually learn something from them as well? So it's not just a, like a young person's game. So that is a huge important thing. I mean, we talk about four generation in the office space today, but then you have the other generation who's left the working area. What will they do? How can they be part of this? They want to go and have a coffee, but how can what, what more can that be for them? So absolutely, the pensioners. How how can we you what can, what can that be? That is definitely something that I. I've spoke about and I really would like to look into more myself. Obviously, there there, there is an entire city of Stockholm with a lot of roofs that are not being used at all. Use the the roofs of whatever that might be. I know there is challenges to that, but I think we should. Not everything needs to be in the city. And then again, like, why would we have cars everywhere? And I think in the future, there will become, I mean, are we talking about long future? But if you have the self-driving cars, there will be no need for parking space. My God, you will have so much space to work with. And yeah. stuff. <laughs> there is so many possibilities. The there. car will find the parking instead of you. Yeah. Just. Yeah, yeah. Or or not even have that because I'm the client number one. And then when I get off, you're the next client. It just continues. Exactly. Um, because it's something that you use when you need it. Well, I would love to talk about the topic like forever. But yeah. I know you have a cute little baby that you need to take care of. If we end this great episode with what is the next step for you, David? The next step will be to look into the co-working 2.0, what that might be. And I love to be part of that experiment. And the people that listen to this, feel free to to reach out. Uh, I'm sure you can publish that address, but david at davidknutson.se. I'll be happy to get ideas about what you believe the next thing would be. I'll be more than happy to do that, uh, to take in that, because again, it's it, everyone needs to be involved uh, in creating this because it's part of your everyday life. So I will do that. Um, I'm starting up a completely diff- different thing as well um, on my, my little free time. And then I have a beautiful wife that I also need to obviously prioritize for everything. And so a little bit of business, a little bit of my own time and a lot of family time. That's amazing. <laughs> you have so much energy, David. <laughs> What should I do with it all? Yeah. <laughs> well, so the last two questions. I promise no more. The first one, three takeaway messages. And the second one, three hashtags. Three takeaways. A takeaway from this will absolutely be, I mean, for you guys that work with this, look into the possibilities of, of using the co-working community as a test platform. The people that are sitting there are from so many different parts of the world and areas and whatever you come from, you can use them because they're quite open to be to be um, challenged. And I think a lot of things, there are so many possibilities to do that with co-working, co-workers, I would say. So for you guys do that. For you as a person who's running around starting your own business and have no ideas like, well, I do not want to sit in this cafe space again. Go in, try a co-working space. Just try for a bit. And you are, all of them, you can sit for free, minimum a day, more than that sometimes. Go in, just say, hi, I'd like to try. Can you tell me how it works? And then for you as a large corporation, thinking about, this is probably just a fad. Uh, They'll come back to me and whatever it might be. No, no, no. Use a co-working space. Reach out to them and say, like, we'd like to run an innovation project with you guys or... We would like to have, how can we get in contact with your network? So, you, I mean, use the co-working space because they want to be used. It sounds a bit weird, but it is basically how you can 
help each other out. Three hashtags. Yes. Get it done. Always learn and never sit still. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Should do the mic drop. <laughs> Well, David, thank you so much. Thank you. This was one of the amazing episodes that I Fantastic. recorded. And thank you for listening to this episode. Thank you for listening to City Life Podcast Urbanistica. I am Mustafa Sharif. Have a good life.